ladies and gentlemen, this is the Views Express Live right here. Broadcasting live from behind enemy lines in FEMA Region 9. In the biggest little city in the world, Reno, Nevada, this is the Views Express Live. Yes. Email me, freeamericaradio at usa.com. Freeamericaradio at usa.com. Go to freeamericaradio.us for more information. Go check things out there as well. Uh, Lots of information there. I just put up something in the news blog up there. And, uh, well, um, lots of things going on. Go to Free America Radio on Facebook. I put up, I put up, some articles, I got a couple of articles uh, printed out to read for you because if I use the other browser, it would not be good for the sound. So anyway, <laughs> it's one of those days, folks. <clears throat> one of those days. Hey, I want to give a big shout out to Mr. Bob Brutus over at wakingupthemasses.com. I want to... Uh, uh, let you all know that his show, Kicking the Capstone or Waking Up the Masses, is right there on wakingupthemasses.com. Go check it out. You will not be disappointed. Anyway, this is The Views Express Live. What is reality? The foundation of reality is based on many concepts. Each person perceives reality differently. In the book, The Grid, by Marie D. Jones and Larry Flaxman, they explore the hidden infrastructure of reality. Get your copy today at Barnes & Noble and Amazon.com. The Grid, by Marie D. Jones and Larry Flaxman. Photography is an art form, and Adventures in Photography shows you all of the forms of art there is in our world. Spencer Hughes captures the colors and works of natural art in his book, Adventures in Photography. For more information, go to spencerhughesphotography.com. Sarasota's home for R&B and soul. The Razorblade Express with Dave the Rave. Hey, how you doing? This is the Views Express Live, broadcasting live on Spreaker.com. Also, if you can't hear me there, go to freeamericaradio.us. Check it out there. Of course, if there's no sound, I don't know what you're going to do. <laughs> Except listen to me on the phone, which you can go to Spreaker.com, download the apps, right there at the bottom of the screen and check out the show that way. Yes. (laughs) I just had somebody in the Spreaker chat tell me they can't hear it on Spreaker.com. Don't know why. I have no clue. There is a little volume button, by the way. Not a button, but it's like a uh, it's down there at the bottom on the right hand side, a little volume thing, you know, by the speaker. I don't know. If it's not working, I have no clue. Um, but you can also hear me on uh, wakingupthemasses.com as well. Uh, just I'm all over the place. Uh, just best place to catch me is freeamericaradio.us. Um, or, again, if you if Spreaker's burping and having some problems, then, of course, try the apps for your communication device and see what happens there. How y'all doing today? <clears throat> Did anybody catch the uh, uh, the speech, State of the Union address? Because I didn't. I really don't care. He's a liar. Oh, and by the way, 
on Fox News, the former speechwriter for George W. Bush was on and said to Megyn Kelly, that speech sounded very familiar. And guess what it was? Because he wrote it. <laughs> Not only is the president a liar, he's a plagiarist. So there you go. <laughs> um, <clears throat> anyway, hey, I want to give you a heads, a heads up. You can listen to this show on wakingupthemasses.com. You can also listen to this show 7 p.m. Eastern on wakingupthemasses.com at 1650 a.m. Microbroadcasting to the Chickamauga, Georgia area. So I'm going to welcome all you listeners over there in in that great state of Georgia. Hey, did you know that uh, another gun manufacturer is leaving, or should I say expanding, uh, from... Uh, an eastern state down to Tennessee. So it looks like all of your gun manufacturers are moving. Ruger and Smith & Wesson left California, or what I hear, they left. So I don't know. There's a lot of places that, uh, well, let's put it this way. You don't need a city, state, county license to carry a gun. You know what you need? The Second Amendment period end of sentence any state governor any city manager anybody i don't care who you are that wants to put legislation through for gun control is in direct violation of the second amendment of the united states constitution and the bill of rights prior to 1871 so remember that anyway Hey, I want to say hello to Mr. Bob Brutus from Waking Up the Masses. Uh, He's in the speaker chat, wakingupthemasses.com. Check that out as well. And also, the one and only Mr. Nick Tucker from Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker on Facebook and also distortedreality.podbean.com. Hey, if you heard the first, uh, if you heard the opening of the show, I played the Edison edition the recording of the Star Spangled Banner. So after the show, you may want to go back and check that out. So, yes, I thought it was appropriate for today. Also <clears throat> in the news, Israel's head of military intelligence, quote, there are 170,000 rockets and missiles directed at Israel. That's what he said. Israel's head uh, of military intelligence, Major General Aviv Kohavi, on Wednesday addressed security threats facing the Jewish state, including 170,000 rockets and renewed scope uh, for cyber attacks. From what I under- let me interject something here about Israel. From what I understand, I, I don't believe they're full-fledged uh, Jews, okay? This is what I... Uh, am am gathering from other pieces of information that I am researching, and I think someone told me that as well. Uh, but they're not Jews, okay? The Palestinians are more Jewish than the ones that are in Israel right now. Uh, so, someone please want to send me that information to Free America Radio at USA dot com. Free America Radio at USA dot com. And uh, let me know if I'm correct in that. And uh, because I want to (laughs) know, you know, I'm curious. Continuing on, uh, speaking at the seventh annual security challenges of the 21st century uh, uh, conference, that's the word I'm looking for, at Tel Aviv's Institute of National Security Studies, Kahavi said, quote, there are 170,000 rockets and missiles directed at Israel. There are increased threats from cyber realm, along with great additional uh, potential for intelligence and cyber capabilities, unquote. In a briefing note published after the speech, INSS said Kohavi described the major strategic threats facing Israel, including the growing range, accuracy, lethality, and number of rockets and missiles aimed at the Jewish state. He also spoke about Iran's nuclear project, which continues unabated. He addressed asymmetrical warfare and the rise of urban asymmetrical warfare and the fact that 
that the IDF now faces more sophisticated enemies, more instability, and more porous borders. <sighs> Can you say World War III? Israel is surrounded by threats all around it, he said. Hezbollah, Syria, Sinai, Gaza, and an active enemy in the West Bank fueling the conventional terror threat, which Israel still faces. Regarding Hezbollah specifically, the major general described, uh, described it as not just a terrorist organization, given its sophisticated arsenal. He also spoke of the threats of Israel's home front, the cyber threat, which is both growing and not entirely understood in the battle for Israel's legitimacy. Overall, the environment is far more dynamic and complex and challenging than ever before, Israel's head of intelligence said. The weaker economy is also continuing to fuel insecurity and upheaval, as is the process of Islam. Islamization, Islamization, there we go, Islamization, I don't know, Islam, okay, the Muslims, the radical Muslims want to kick them all out and, you know, or force them to convert or kill them, basically is what it is, which can fuel radicalization, he said. In addition, there is a loss of governance and process of fragmentation, he said, with Syria being a good example. In Kohavi's estimation, fragmentation is happening at the regional level with the rise of global jihadists with 30,000 now in Syria. But on a positive side, Kohavi said uh, Israel's border with Gaza and Egypt is closed and Egypt is destroying tunnels. Weapons smuggling has declined and Egypt is also cracking down on terrorism in, in Sinai. Kahavi said he sees the chemical weapons deal with Syria as positive, as is the weakening of Syrian military. The radical axis is weaker, he said, with Hezbollah and Hamas in crisis. Countries in the region are busy with themselves and they have less money to finance terror, he said. The weakening of the Muslim Brotherhood is also an opportunity for the state of Israel. He said Israeli deterrence is stronger, especially at the conventional warfare level. Yes. Bottom line is, folks, Israel's not, in, in some way, they're fighting their own battles to keep that whole area alive. Why is Israel a strategic uh, area? Well, you tell me. If Israel falls, who comes in to take over? Look at a map where Israel is, and you tell me. If Israel falls, who comes in to take over? The first thing that's going to happen is the Palestinians are going to come in and just wipe everything up. Or, you know, force everybody to, you know, enslave everybody, yada, yada, yada. Or just completely bomb the crap out of the place and then go in and clean up and take out, take over. That's one aspect of it. But take a look at a map and take a look at who's around Israel and who would benefit with the fall of Israel. <clears throat> I don't know, folks. For over, f what, something in the range of about 5,000 years... There's try there there's peace has been attempted in the Middle East very unsuccessfully because I believe that the information that I have received or that I have heard uh more than a dozen times or more that the people of Israel that are there right now are not the original Jewish people they call themselves Jew but they're really not because apparently they took over in 1947. They came from everywhere else around the world and took over. You know, pretty much. You know, uh, and that's why the Palestinians are pissed off. That's why there's a wall. Okay. This has been going on for years and years and years and years and years and years. Long before I was born, 
and it's going to go along it's going to go on long after i'm gone and long after most of us are gone because there is always going to be struggle and conflict in the middle east always and if you ask a palestinian and an israeli why they fight I mean, what the original purpose of the wars and the battles are, most of them are going to tell you they don't know. Then when you point it out in the Bible and in the writings of most of those people back then, they're going to get a clue that what they're doing now is totally and absolutely pointless. Yeah, I said it. I said it. I can tell you now that there will never be peace in the Middle East. Now, some of you uh, know Christians out there that that would say, well, it's not, there's not going to be peace until Jesus comes down and splits the mountain, you know, the mountain in half and blah, blah, blah. blah. Never going to happen, folks. Never going to happen. And I'll tell you why. My opinion only, speculating on trends, okay? And basing this off of information I have read about over the years. There is never going to be peace in the Middle East due to one simple fact. Neither side will come to an agreement that killing each other is not the, the, the ultimate you know, success story. This is not, killing one another is not going to help matters. Okay? Th this is not, it's, there's never going to be an agreement that humanity has to live together. That's the key. They're never going to come to that conclusion. I mean, you've got cousins fighting cousins and family fighting family on Palestinians and the Israeli side. I mean, you, you, th th this whole thing is a freaking nightmare. And like I said, if you ask a bunch of Israelis and a bunch of Palestinians why they fight, and you ask them what the original reason was for them to fight, they're going to say they don't know. Then, on top of that, folks, oh, we have the Temple Mount, where you have the Muslims. Now, I know Muslims in Stockton, California. I don't know too many here in Reno, but I can tell you now that they, get, they look at the radical Muslims and go, those people are idiots. I've talked to a few when I was growing up in Stockton, California, and I can tell you this much. You know, when I was deep into my research and all of this many years ago, I would talk to people, you know, first, second, third hand, and the consensus was those radical Muslims that are killing everybody and strapping bombs to their thing and going and doing those, those people are complete idiots. Okay. And the one thing that I found just by looking at all of this and examining it and putting two and two together and just really, you know, trying to come to some understanding as to why there is war in the Middle East comes down to this. Neither side wants to compromise. That, that's one of the aspects. The other one I mentioned earlier was they're not going to accept the fact that Humanity can live together. Okay. It's just, it's, one, it's, it's one of those things. Now, I remember Bill Clinton when he was president and he had the two people there. They signed it. They said, yeah. And about three months later, it all went back to hell in a handbasket. But still, still, that was a step. It was a step. The thing was, is that we were funding both sides. <laughs> Yeah, 
So that's why that's the main reason why it's not going to stop because we're funding both sides as a distraction from what's actually happening. And it's never going to it's never going to end. It's never going to end. You know, I I see this happening. I see all of this brewing. I see all of this you know, coming to a head at some point. I don't see Saudi Arabia or their armies stepping in to Israel and, and, you know, to the Israelis and the Palestinians and stepping in and saying, you know, hey, you know, knock it off. I don't see that happening. Who do you think's funding it? Now, some of the things that I see, let me, let me drop back about, 13 years and go to 9-11-2001. I began to see a connection between the Israelis, the Saudis, and the United States. I just couldn't, I, I, at that time, couldn't put the puzzle pieces together to figure out what was going on. But subsequently since then, yeah. The United States, the Israelis, and the Saudis want conflict in the Middle East. And if you follow the money, you will see who's making more of it. If you follow the money, you will see who, well, who's dishing it out. If you connect the dots, you know why there can never be peace in the Middle East. Because here's a speculation. When the United States collapses, you notice I didn't say if, when the United States collapses, that leaves Israel without backup. And once we collapse, all those countries around Israel are going to start dropping bombs and there ain't nothing we're going to be able to do about it. And the Saudis are going to sit there making all sorts of money. And the elites are going to be making, you know, money from their companies who are using the bombs to, you know, I mean, it it's all a racket. General Smedley Butler said the same thing. War is a racket. Okay? He said that in front of Congress. You can go look it up in the congressional records. War is a racket. Because if it wasn't, why do you think the Bushes made so much money? The Bushes, if I am correct in saying this, are in the petroleum business. They're big oil people. George H.W. Bush was standing at the hospital door on the day that President John F. Kennedy was murdered. You didn't. I, you notice I didn't say assassinated. That's typical of what the state-run media will tell you. But he was assa- he, he he was murdered. He was standing at the door. At least that's what evidence has proven. And look who was. In a group of, I, I think it was 40 people, or the group of 40, or the gang of 40, whatever it was called back then, there was another potential and future president who knew quite a bit. And then you got to look at the Warren Commission. Who else was on the Warren Commission? I can go down the whole list. There was another future president. But all three of those people including or 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 as well as George H W Bush all three of those people made tons of money because Lyndon Baines Johnson had his fingers in all the defense contracts so all these people made money Kennedy wanted wanted us out of Vietnam since we'd been there since, what was it, 
57 or something like that? 58, we sent advisors in? Well, Kennedy went, no, nah, we're, we're going to pull out. We don't want to be there. There was a lot of other reasons why he was murdered, but Lyndon Baines Johnson went, I don't think so. War is a racket. The three people I talked about was not only George H.W. Bush, who became president, but Richard Nixon and Gerald Ford, who was on the Warren Commission. I think somebody blackmailed them, don't you? Or paid them off, one of the two. I don't know, folks. I mean, this whole system, I mean, what what is the purpose of trying to shake people up and open their eyes? What is the purpose? Well, if you're looking at the same thing I'm looking at and interpret it a lot differently than I do, then obviously you're not paying attention. <laughs> it, seriously, some problems there, folks. You know? I don't, I don't know, okay? If I don't know something, I will tell you I don't know. And I don't know why people don't look at, or I should say, I don't know why people are not interpreting what is happening in the same manner that I'm seeing it. If you see a red Volkswagen right there in front of you and I see it and it's red and we both agree it's red, where's the misinterpretation in that, folks? I'll be back right after this. Tune in to The Views Express Live, Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, right here on RadioKahuna.com. Today on RadioKahuna.com. We so appreciate having you in. This is Steve from Claire Normal Talk Radio. I'm also here, one of the personalities on Radio Kahuna. I enjoy doing this. I enjoy having you people in. Thank you so very much. Hey, we're growing all over the planet by leaps and bounds. People from all over the planet are coming in and listening. But there's not enough. It's not enough. We need more. We're asking for your help. Tell a friend. Tell two friends. Tell ten friends. Just tell them this. Tell them they'll get laid. Ah, come on in. Enjoy the surf. The sets are fine. Steve from Claire Normal Talk Radio and Radio Kahuna. Thank you very much. Get your morning started with the Morning Brew on 92.6 The Blitz. Music from the 60s, 70s, and more. The Blitz 92.6. Go to RadioRockTheBlitz.blogspot.com. This is the Views Express Live right here for the 29th of January 2014. Right here broadcasting live from behind enemy lines in FEMA Region 9. From the biggest little city in the world, Reno, Nevada. Welcome all of you in Nevada. How are ya? Cool. What is on the agenda from the elites well enslavement is one of them 
Yes. Unless you're Ted Turner and Bill Gates who want uh, and have uh, professed in saying that uh, uh, they would rather have 80% of the world's population gone. Yeah. Or you could be Ray Kurzweil who wants to live forever with, yeah, with life extension technologies that you and I as the general public selling our wares in our shops and on the streets get nothing, okay? That's what the elites want and that's what's on their agenda. Question is, what are you going to do about it? Is this ever going to stop? Is this ever going to get to a point where it's not going to happen? Folks, it's going to happen. But we can slow them down considerably due to the fact that there's like 200 million people in America right now that are very pissed off at this current administration. We're not talking, oh, pissed off I lost something or pissed off I'm, you know, missing something or forgot. No, 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 no. Let me just tell it like it is. There's about 80 percent of the American people who are enraged, enraged. Washington, D.C. knows it. President Obama knows it. Why do you think since 2008 he's allowed the U.N. to bring in U.N. troops onto American soil? Just a couple of months ago, China brought in troops to Hawaii. Go look it up for natural disaster training. No. Why do you think <clears throat> the military industrial complex sent ships to the North China Sea? Why? Oh, there's a whole conflict over there and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <clears throat> there is. Why do you think China and Japan are a little pissed off right now with one another? How would you... How would you like to see World War III? Because that's where it's headed, folks. Well, you got to look at it this way, too. Japan is, a, is at a huge disadvantage right now because of the Daiichi nuclear plant that was built by GE exploded. And they're, in a, they're right now in a uh, China syndrome meltdown, which is going to affect and has affected the whole planet. So they're at a disadvantage right now. But Dr. Michio Kaku came up with a, a scenario. Why, you know, he used Chernobyl as the example. The Russian military went in because they know how to do this stuff. And they, you know, covered it up and, you know, fixed it, right? Sort of. Buried it. But this is far gone. This is too far gone. You can bring in the Japanese military all you want. You can bring in the world's military all you want. We're talking meltdown, folks. If that radiation or that core hits that water table underneath Japan, bye-bye. I don't think it's there yet, but nobody knows because they can't get close enough to figure it out. People on the ships, um, military... American military gone over there are now having cancer problems. They got this. They got okay. But is it all blown out of proportion? Is it all sensationalized? I don't know because nobody's telling the truth. Okay, you might so you might get something from here and from there. You might get this story. You might. We got to put it two and two together, folks. So there's that war that's happening. That that rumor of war. There's pestilence happening. There's disasters all over the world. Damn, we got some biblical prophecy happening here, don't we? You might want to go ask Peter Kling what's going on. Go, go, check, go check out Peter Kling on Facebook. Go read Edgar Cayce or Nostradamus. 
I don't know, folks. Hell, all I know is I'm grateful to be alive every day. I'm grateful to wake up. I just enjoy my life. But you won't enjoy it when they come knocking at your door, hauling you away in trucks. Remember a couple of years ago, I don't know, it's probably three years ago now, where MTV ran a PSA or something like that, showing just a regular family, went to kids, doing the homework, and a dad sitting in the chair reading the paper. This is on MTV, mind you. Knock at the door. Husband gets up, goes, walks to the door, grabs the knob, opens it up, and just as he opens it up, gets slammed up against the wall, and the military comes in and grabs the kids and grabs the wife and throws them in a truck, and then it dissolves into the trucks that took the people away to the Nazi camps in Nazi Germany, to the death camps. That's on MTV, folks. Go look it up. And don't tell me there's no FEMA camps. Don't tell me that it won't happen again, because it will. From government slaves or GOVT slaves dot info. Secret FEMA death camps already at a location near you. As Obama administration continues to creep closer and closer to tyranny, one could only imagine how far he'd go before Americans start to started to revolt. Luckily for Obama, he's already begun plans to contain the situation, allowing him to progress, to progress with his agenda with as little resistance as possible through the use of FEMA camps. Bob, if you're still in the speaker chat, Bob Brutus from wakingupthemasses.com, what's happening down there in your area? I ask that because every so often here in the biggest little city in the world, Reno, Nevada, I see these SUVs, these Hummers sometimes, these, these trucks that say Federal Protective Service, Homeland Security Police on the side of them. What's happening down in your neck of the woods? And Nick Tucker from Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker on Facebook. What's happening down in the Las Vegas area? Continuing, we all know Obama is working all hours of the day to try and disarm us as much or disarm as much of the population as possible. And although he claims it in uh, the name of American safety, many U.S. citizens know otherwise. But if it were to come to a point where Americans needed to be suppressed in order for the preservation of Obama's reign to prevail, to prevail what would he do? Exactly. That's a good question. You can find that information on Free America Radio on Facebook. You can read the rest of the article there. It's amazing. I don't know if it's me or if it's just, I don't know. I don't. It's amazing to me. I keep dropping my phone because I got an article I'm going to read to you here in a bit. It's amazing to me that people can look at something and say it's bogus. Oh, just name it. What What do people look at? I mean, they'll, they'll just look at it and go, oh, it's bogus. That's a bunch of BS. That's a... It's amazing to me that that happens. But here's something else. Here's something else. It's also amazing to me that there's people like myself, Bob Brutus, Nick Tucker, a bunch of other people, of course, in the alternative media, who look at something and go, huh, wow, now I have questions. And we look and research and dig and investigate and find out that, yes, it is more than what other people say it is. And we look around and we see these things we see these people looking at these things saying, nah, 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 that's blah, blah, blah. 
they live by a philosophy, and that philosophy is out of sight, out of mind. That's what they that's their ideologies. That that's that's their parts of their philosophy. I say it all the time, folks. Just because you close your eyes doesn't mean the bad things are gonna go away. You know. Facts are facts, people, and I don't know why people can't look at something and say, Oh wow, that's not right. I have friends of mine who had always looked at me when I mentioned stuff like this and they tell me, oh, you know, you're just, oh, that's just, you're just paranoid. You're one of those conspiracy, you know, kooks. Really? Then how come I'm right? How come Bob Brutus is right? How come Nick Tucker is right? How come Alex Jones is right? How come Glenn Beck is right? How come Mark uh, Michael Savage is right? How come all the people in the alternative media who do this, who see this, who go behind the scenes, pull away the veil and point out to you who's pushing the buttons and pulling the handles are absolutely right? How come? Are we all paranoid? Are we all having mass uh, hallucinations? Mass delusions? No. We see it for what it is. It's like two people standing there looking at a red Volkswagen. If we agree that it's a red Volkswagen, where's the misinterpretation? Don't think there is any. <laughs> I really don't. Okay. I'm not a financial guy. I'm not an expert of any kind. But from the Wall Street Journal, it says, Fed sticks to script on pairing bond buys. Soft jobs data to molten in uh, emerging markets fail to derail wind down. Bernanke gets un uh, unanimity uh, in his last meeting. He's stepping down, by the way. The Federal Reserve, unfazed by recent sell-offs in emerging markets or disappointing U.S. job gains in December, said it would scale back its bond-buying program for the second time in six weeks, pressing ahead with a strategy to wind down the purchases in small and steady steps. The Fed said it would cut its purchases of Treasury bonds and mortgaged-backed securities to $65 billion a month from $75 billion, and officials suggested they would continue reducing the purchases in $10 billion increments in the months ahead, the first cut from $85 billion was announced in December and made in January. For Chairman Ben Bernanke, the meeting marked a mild denou uh, denouncement after eight <clears throat> tumultuous years running the Fed. He won a unanimous vote among officials 10 to 0 in favor of proceeding with the bond buying uh, pullback. His first vote without dissent since June 2011. Mr. Berdanke's term ends Friday. Vice Chairman Janet Yellen will succeed him. The Fed hasn't said when she'll be sworn in as chairwoman. First time in history there'll be a woman there. <clears throat> Although I could be wrong, I don't follow that that much. <clears throat> so, what's that mean? What is buying the treasury bonds mean? They're, the federal government is buying its own debt and it's raising prices every place. Have you been to the gas station? Have you been to the store? Now, if they're buying back or cutting back the buying of the treasury bonds, what is going to happen when all of that ends? And by the way, in connection with that, the Dow Jones dropped 220 points <laughs> on that announcement. Yes. Huh. Any connection there? Let's add two plus two, shall we?
So, what do we do? I like what Pete Santilli said on his show. Pete Santilli. Now, I'm, I'm going to say this before I go any further. I listen to a lot of shows. I listen to Glenn Beck, Alex Jones, Pete Santilli. I listen to, I also listen to Mark Dice just to see what he has to say. I listen to a bunch of people. And let me tell you something. It gives me a view as to literally what is going out uh, going on out there in the world what are their views what is their perspective i listen to nick tucker i listen to bob brutus let me tell you something it gives me an opportunity to use that information and say okay well all of it is good but i've got to check this out because that was interesting i gotta check that one out because that was interesting Let's check this information out. I'll research this and see where, and this is what I do. Giving you a little behind the scenes of what happens inside my head when I listen to all these people. And it helps me. It helps me understand. And it helps me, literally, to know who I can listen to and who I can not listen to or listen to or whatever. It, 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 I can choose who I listen to. No one is more right than anyone else. And no one is more wrong than anyone else. It's just information. You may or may not agree with it. I may or may not agree with it. But it's information. It's something to take a look at. It's something to either put on the shelf and wait till later to figure that one out or to immediately take a look at. So when I listen to Pete Santilli, I'm, I'm comparing a lot of people to each other. I, 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 it's, it might be unfair, but that's what I do because it gives me a well-rounded view as to people's position. So when I listened to Pete Santilli this morning, I thought to myself, this guy's on, on game. This guy has, has, it got, you know, has it going on. I mean, this guy knows what he's doing. He was the one. He also had Dr. Judy Wood on his show. Go to drjudywood.com. She's a forensic expert and, and taught forensics. and She's really deep into the forensics. She'll tell you as to what happened at 9-1-1-2001. But I listen to all these other people. Now, now when Jesse Ventura was on Alex Jones' show, he mentioned the same thing. You ought to, you know, get Dr. Judy Wood on the show. Well, he poo-pooed the idea because I don't hear her on the show. Or haven't. But here's my point. When I listen to different people every day, or when I listen to one person and then the next day listen to somebody else, I'm getting a better view as to, you know, how these people are thinking, number one, and what they're seeing, number two, that helps me be better at doing what I do because <laughs> I sift through the BS. That's what I do. I sift through the BS. And when I tell you from govtslaves.info that FEMA camps are there and all of that, that's not BS, folks. Because not only do I look at one piece of information, I go check it out with other things that I'm seeing and hearing. And I go to YouTube and I use other resources and I, you know... By the way, you can go to FEMA themselves on their own website. You can go to, you know, all sorts of websites from the government, and they'll tell you exactly what they're going to do. <laughs> you know. But I got to, you know, I'm just telling you, I go different resources. I, I use different resources to give myself a better view, two or three or four or five different resources to back up what one resource is either saying or look at that one resource and go, oh, that's BS. 
<clears throat> Here's something else for you Nevada residents. Let me bring it up on my phone and I'll tell you about it as soon as my phone. Love it. 3G slower than molasses. <laughs> hey, how y'all doing? If you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, no question is off limits. Please ask me or you'll never know. Uh, if I don't know, I'll tell you I don't know. No question is off limits. Email me, freeamericaradio at usa.com. Freeamericaradio at usa.com. Hang on to that address, too, because in a couple of days, it's going to change. So stay tuned. From the Wall Street Journal, Reed opposes, quote-unquote, fast-track process on trade. And here's an update. Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, Democrat in Nevada, broke with the White House Wednesday and said he opposed legislation aimed at smoothing the passage of free trade agreements, instantly imperiling two major trade deals being negotiated with Asia and European partners. The move spells big problems for ongoing talks with Asia-Pacific countries and the European Union because both deals likely would have required such a fast-track approval to clear the U.S. Congress. Let me interject something. It says uh, here, uh, it would affect... It would imperil two major trade deals being negotiated with Asia and the European partners. If you look at a film, I can't remember the name of it right off hand, but if but Alex Jones, uh, Infowars.com, you can look at the films there. And basically they have, and I remember seeing it, they have a map of the three regions they have the asian union the european union and the north american union well when when reed says it's going to imperil it's going to cause problems whatever with the asian and, and european unions that's what he's talking about and he's opposed to fast tracking it even though he's fast tracked many other things because let me give it to you in layman's terms He's trying to find the best way for him to make a profit and for it to benefit him. And that's true with all the politicians there in Washington, D.C. Okay? They know what they're doing. And their lobbyists and special interest groups, who I believe should get fired immediately, are there to pay them. The politicians get something done. It comes back down to the uh, special interest groups and the lobbyists and the lobbyists or the special interest groups funnel money, you know, uh, launder money into these uh, politicians' uh, coffers. And uh, again, I'm speculating, folks. I, I don't know. That, I don't know if that's how it specifically works, but somewhere down the line, they get kickbacks. Why do you think Nancy Pelosi wasn't there? No, uh, uh, Dianne Feinstein went to Congress with zip. She was worth basically a million bucks. She wasn't, you know, she wasn't all that, you know, her husband's a freaking billionaire, right? She didn't have to be in Congress. But now she's worth, oh, a couple of million dollars, you know, a couple of hundred million dollars. How'd that happen? Huh? <laughs> can you say kickback i'm sure because all the contracts her husband got she fought for so <laughs> hey going to the speaker chat before we go to break here i want to i want to welcome jen the love muffin Yes, she says, hi, how you doing? <laughs> she says, hi, Rev. Well, hi there, love muffin. Yeah, she likes it when I, when I say that. Anyway, we're going to take a little break early. So we shall uh, return in just a few. Um, if, oh, before I go to break here, 
if you have a an audio clip, 30 seconds, whatever it is, for your show, send that to me. I'll play it on here or on the Wayne S. Pierce show. If you have uh, anything of that nature that you want to promote, send it. Free America Radio at USA.com. Free America Radio at USA.com. Go to freeamericaradio.us for more information. Late Night in the Midlands is an alternative media that covers the truth, theory, and fact that the lamestream media won't talk about. We cover everything from the known and the unknown, the normal and the paranormal, the government lies and the government ties, and even their thrive. We tell what's coming, what's going, whether it be politics or archaeologists. We have an amazing fan base, and our shows are all archived to be heard millions of times more. So tell your friends, your family, and anybody you care about about LateNightInTheMidlands.com. Become a member and be informed. Get your morning started with the Morning Brew on 92.6 The Blitz. Music from the 60s, 70s, and more. The Blitz 92.6. Go to RadioRockTheBlitz.blogspot.com. Free Talk Live. You give someone an ounce of liberty and they'll go around abusing it and harming everyone else with it. If we legalize guns... People will um, be shooting people everywhere. Right. If you legalize prostitution, people will be having sex on the street corners. <laughs> if you legalize drugs, we'll have heroin vending machines in the streets. We've heard it all on Free Talk Live. <laughs> they take it to the most absurd, illogical extremes. And you're absolutely right, Alexander. It's okay for them to have freedom. Yeah, you can give them a gun. They won't go around shooting people. But watch out with their neighbor because you give them a gun, they'll go around in a rampage around the city killing everyone. Oh, oh, but yes, they can be trusted, and apparently the government can be trusted, too, because magically, magically, we only elect the best of the best, the cream of the crop. The bureaucrats that are administering (laughs) these programs are the upper echelon of society, the most trustworthy individuals. Sometimes when I squint, I swear I can see a halo above their heads. (laughs) Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Are you tired of the mainstream media, the media that is so biased you wouldn't even let your dog listen to it? Well, there's an answer. Angel Clark. On Radio Just listen to her fans. One hell of a writer. I've read a considerable amount of her articles and quite impressive. Until Angel, my life was void of meaning. I want to thank you for saving my goldfish from drowning. I love Angel Clark's honesty and her down to earth concern about the people. She is very dedicated. Angel, we need you. This Angel's a sexy woman. I think she's going to go places, but I don't know why. Ladies and gentlemen, she does a good job. If it wasn't for Angel, you saved his life and I will be indebted to you forever. SussexCountyAngel.com <laughs> Be a part of Angel's Army. Monday through Friday, 7 to 9 p.m. on RadioFreedom.com Free Talk Live. Do you guys have a zombie plan? I'm, I'm just wondering what this country is going to do if we had some sort of apocalypse like that. Like a zombie what are we attack. Gonna do? People coming yeah, out like of the ground, like in Thriller, or, like in, uh, no, in Michael Jackson's like 28 Thriller. Days later, like a virus or something. Oh, okay. I mean, people don't come back to life. Well, now, there are different kinds of zombies <laughs> out there. <laughs> Now, um, but, well, let me go through the, the, the types of zombies. I mean, you've got the ones that can crawl out of the ground, right? And then she was talking about, like, an infection kind of zombie, mm-hmm. like a la Resident Evil, for instance. So, ideally, if you're going to have to perish at the, the hands of a zombie, which would be the preference? Would you prefer to have your brains eaten, or would you prefer to become one of them? I think I'd rather just die. Um, yeah? Yeah, I'd, the last thing I'd want is, of course, the people you split up with, and I'm talking my wife and my child, I'm coming back, I'm wanting to eat Laura's brains. <laughs> It's bad. It's bad. (laughs) Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. What does freedom mean? Tune in to lrn.fm to find out. lrn.fm is the Liberty Radio Network. 
a collection of live talk radio and podcasts, all coming from a principled pro-liberty perspective. LRN.FM show hosts aren't left, right, or conspiracy kooks. You can tune in 24-7 to LRN.FM via your phone, computer, satellite, and more. Listen free anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. How you doing? This is Reverend Wayne S. Pierce right here for the Views Express Live for the 29th of January 2014. My God, January's almost over. Email me, freeamericaradio at usa.com. Freeamericaradio at usa.com. Hold on to that email address because in a few days it's going to change. So hang on to it. Free America Radio at USA.com. Go to freeamericaradio.us for more information. I got a sponsors page over there. Get in in the next couple of days. If you have any questions, please email me. Freeamericaradio at USA.com. You can also donate if you'd like, if you can. That's cool. Free America Radio Network is going to the next level. And we're somewhat there. <laughs> You can hear us over on RadioKahuna.com over there with Steve Hembry. Go to RadioKahuna.com and thank Steve Hembry and help out his network too because he's growing. Anyway, I want to give a big shout out to two, three, yeah, a bunch of people. But <laughs> Bob Brutus over at WakingUpTheMasses.com. You can also hear his show right after this one. Yes. And for those folks, I want to say hello to folks in the Chickamauga, Georgia area over at Waking Up the Masses, uh, 1650 AM on the micro broadcasting side of things. So hello folks out there in the Chickamauga, Georgia area. Yes, we are gaining ground here at Free America Radio Network and you can assist in that. So if you want to donate, please do. If you can't, hey, no big deal. You know, I understand completely, okay? If you want to sponsor the show, in a couple of days, you won't see that sponsors page there at freeamericaradio.us because I'm taking it down. So get in on the ground floor. Um, it's not going to, it's probably going to come up a little bit later. But hopefully, cross my fingers, I'll have a whole new website come March 1st, okay? So hang on to the email address, freeamericaradio at usa.com, freeamericaradio at usa.com. There's a new one coming up. Stay tuned. More about that later. Go to Free America Radio on Facebook. Check out the articles that I have up there. And... Uh, I am going to say this, that we are not dealing with a president of the United States. We are dealing with a dictator, okay? We are dealing with a dictator, okay? Who else would who else would rule by edict i don't know oh yeah i do hitler mussolini stalin you know yeah 
the um, <clears throat> he's ruling by edict. He is a dictator. And that's the way it is. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to say this to all my liberal friends who happen to be hanging around the middle of the road type of thing saying, well, he, you know, he made his promises. Uh, get your head out of the clouds, folks. The Republican and Democratic Party are bought off. They're sold. They sold their soul to the New World Order a hell of a long time ago, so get over it. That's just the way it is. Okay? Speaking of the president, he has ruled by edict for quite some time through executive orders. From the DailyBeast.com, the GOP's dead-ended executive order freakout, Janelle Bowie over there, thank you, Janelle. Republicans have tried to whip up a frenzy about Obama's threat to use executive orders, but he's used a lot, he's used lots fewer than most presidents, and the public wants a president who takes action. Yeah, I want a president to take action, but under the constitutional rule of law, Prior to 1871, not the corporation of the United States. There's little Republicans. There's little Republicans were happy with in Tuesday's State of the Union, but they were especially upset with President Obama's promise to utilize executive orders whenever possible. This, for instance, is how he plans to raise the minimum wage for federal contractors to $10.10 an hour, as well as how he plans to create a new kind of retirement savings account through the U.S. Treasury, my RA. Did you, did you hear that? I heard a clip on the Pete Santilli show about that. My RA. As far as presidential uh, uh, approaches go, this is pretty mundane, but that never stopped Republicans from flying into a blind rage over a perceived abuse of power. Perceived abuse of power. Keep that phrase in mind. Quote, we can go to court, unquote, said John McCain. Quote, we haven't got many more options except to tell the American people that we're seeing an abuse of intent of the Constitution, unquote. Wow, now he becomes a good guy. I don't trust John McCain at all. House Speaker John Boehner, House Speaker John Boner, Boehner, declared, quote, we're going to watch very closely because there's a constitution that we all take an oath to, including him, and following the constitution is the basis for House Republicans, unquote. And Texas Senator Ted Cruz, no stranger to hyperbole, warned <clears throat> that this is just part of, quote, persistence pattern, persistent pattern of lawlessness, unquote, and, quote, a willingness to disregard the written law and instead enforce his own policies via executive fiat, unquote. Did you notice that CBS, when he had Ted Cruz on there, he said literally something about the president being, uh, you know, a, a dictator and all that. Did you notice that CBS cut that out? That's your uh, state-run media, folks. They don't want the truth to get out. They never have. They never will. And for all my friends who are liberals in the middle, you're wrong, and you always have been wrong, and you always will be wrong. So there you go. <clears throat> Continuing, if you're inclined at all to take Republicans at their word on this, then it's easy to think that President Obama has used more than his fair share of executive orders. Indeed, given the widely publicized move, Moves in 2012 and 2013, including an order to move deportation efforts away from undocumented children and the human bias towards big events, we tend to remember them, it's possible that the GOP is right. But it isn't. The American, presidents, uh, the American Presidency Project at the University of California, Santa Barbara, keeps a tally of every executive order from every president. And where does Obama rank compared to the uh, to other post-World War II presidents? Second from the bottom. At 168 executive orders in the five years, he has two more than George H.W. Bush. Above him, with 169, is 
Gerald Ford. When the numbers take a leap, JFK had 214 executive orders, George W. Bush had 291, Jimmy Carter had 320, and Lyndon Johnson had 325. Bill Clinton signed off on 364 during his eight years, and Ronald Reagan came in with 381. The winners in this game are Dwight Eisenhower with 484, and Harry S. Truman with 907. And the awful tyrant, Franklin Roosevelt, with a whopping 3,522. In other words, Republicans can say what they will about the president, but it's ridiculous to denounce Obama for the use of executive orders if you're comparing him to other presidents. Which is to say that this is less about his actions and more about how they stand as a rebuke to the last three years of GOP behavior. No one's, you know, innocent in all, all this, folks. Democrats, Republicans, conservatives, liberals, whatever, it doesn't matter. They're all one and the same, and they're all beating each other up. No one is innocent in any of this. Okay? Continuing, since taking control of the House in 2011, Republicans have committed themselves to blockading as much of the administration as possible. They've filibustered nominees, blocked appointments, and killed legislation, regardless of whether they stood with, uh, whether they stood with it on, on the merits. Their only concern, their only goal, was to damage Obama's credibility and keep the White House from scoring any points. They weren't unsuccessful. Obama's approval rating is at a relative low for his term, but they didn't win either. He's still president. And while they benefited from several administration missteps, including the botched rollout of the Affordable Care Act, it's also true overall their party is underwater with a public that craves action. Keep that in mind, folks. Obama's executive actions are a response to the public concern and one that Republicans can't match on account of their paltry agenda. Instead, the plan is to snipe at the president's proposal to paint it as unconstitutional in hopes that they can tarnish the attempt and keep Obama from salvaging his job approval. I'm sure it will energize Republican partisans. As for the large majority of Americans who liked what they heard from the State of the Union... That's a different question. That is from the Daily Beast.com. Okay. I don't know, folks. I mean, here we are. We live in a dictatorship. He all but came out and said it was. And I got to tell you. I got to tell you, there are things which we can look at and ignore, but we cannot ignore what this man has done. You know, I can look at all the information and research all of the sources and do this. Am I right? Not always. And I fully admit to it. But when I see the actions of this dictator, and when I see what he's done, there ain't no misinterpreting that. And if you can't see it, you need glasses. I'm being sarcastic. You need to open your mind, you need to open your heart, you need to open your spirit. You need to look at what this is and what it truly means to the rest of the United States. I said it before and I'll say it again. If things continue the way they are right now, chances are he will suspend the Constitution and implement martial law shortly prior or shortly after the midterm elections. I hope I'm wrong. Am I right? 
Probably. Am I wrong? Probably. No one is wrong and no one is right in this. The Democrats, the Republicans, forget about them. Forget about the two-party system. Get that delusion out of your head. Okay? You've deluded yourself into believing that there is a two-party system in this country. There hasn't been for quite a while, over a hundred years And the nail on that coffin was, I believe, in 1933. So I don't want to hear it anymore. People are going to tell, ask me, are you right? Are you wrong? Uh, do you know? Uh, I'll be straight with you. If I don't know something, I'll tell you I don't know. And if I'm wrong, I'll admit to it. Why? Uh, Self-responsibility and holding myself accountable. Kind of logical to me, don't you think? Not a lot of people think that. Not a lot of people think that way. Some people think that, hey, look, we have Obama in the office. He's the Messiah. Look at that. Yes, he can do nothing wrong. He's not even a citizen, folks. Don't give me this crap. Oh, well, he showed his uh, birth certificate from Hawaii. The governor of Hawaii says it wasn't even in there. And besides, when he was born, the hospital that's on that fake birth certificate wasn't even built. Hello? Somebody's going to... I know... <laughs> I know someone's going to say, Oh, you're racist. You're prejudiced. No, I'm not. I got friends of every race, creed, and religion that you can think of, so shut up. I've sat down with Jewish people. I've sat down with Catholics. I've sat down with Muslims. I've sat down with Jehovah Witnesses. I've sat down with Mormons. Let me tell you something. These people are pissed off. And so am I. I had one of them say, we get criticized for everything under the sun. I don't know why people can't get it through their thick heads that all they have to do is come ask us questions and sit down and talk with us. I'm like, I'm here. And they're going, yes, we respect you because you know. And I'm like, yes, I do. <laughs> it's, it's not that difficult, folks. Just go talk to people. It's real simple. That's why I don't look at one source. I look at bunch. That's why I ask you that if you have a blog or, or you, you have a website that you work on or you have a radio show or something, send me that information because I want to see what your point of view is. I want to see what your perspective is on this. Hell, I just read stuff uh, in the first hour. I just read stuff in the first hour from uh, GOVT, short for government, govtslaves.info, and uh, the... Alge Miner, I believe it is. A L G E M E I N E R. Oh yeah. I read those. Is Israel's head of military intelligence. Quote, there are 170,000 rockets and missiles directed at Israel. Also from governmentslaves.info. Secret FEMA death camps already at a location near you. Folks, many different sources do I Reuters, New York Times, New York Post, Washington Times, Sacramento Bee, you know, I, Reno Gazette Journal, hello. What you have to understand is this stuff is out there in your face, and if you can't interpret it for what it truly is, for what, uh, for what it is, I don't know what to tell you. I can just share with you the information you got to go look it up and figure this stuff out on your own. I'm trying to give you the little bits and pieces and, you know, trying to guide you in the right direction. I can't give you the answers because, hey, I, am I right? Am I wrong? I, I'm looking at the same information you're looking at. And if you misinterpret it and think it's something else other than what it truly is, I know I'm not wrong. Email me, freeamericaradio at usa.com, freeamericaradio at usa.com. Hold on to that email address because, hey, just hang on to it. 
It's going to change, but keep that one as a backup. Go to freeamericaradio.us. Check out the website. You can also listen to the show from the website. Also, I want to say hello to all the folks on Facebook who are listening to me through that area. And what it does is it takes you directly to Spreaker. I'm, I'm a parent. I, I think that's what it does. And if you've clicked on that and came to Spreaker.com, thank you very much. Appreciate that. I want to <clears throat> say hello to all those folks over at RadioKahuna.com and also WakingUpTheMasses.com over on 1650 AM in Chickamauga, Georgia area. Hello, folks. How are you doing out there on that side of the U.S.? Man, what is going on with your weather out there? <laughs> did did a couple of harp stations explode or something what is going on you've got record colds in those areas what 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 it never snows in florida what the hell's going on <laughs> man anyway hey if you're in the speaker chat on the speaker side of things thank you pop in there say hello say, say you're still with me oh and by the way if you disagree with me, let me know that too. It's okay cuz you know, I'm I'm fine with that. <laughs> I really am. <clears throat> oh boy. If it's not one thing, it's another. Okay, here we go. There are so many things that we have to really pay attention to and the, and the purpose of this show or one of the one of the goals of this show is to help you understand what's going on and to help you pay attention i mean that that's just that's key you know uh if you haven't been here a while thank you uh for coming and listening to the show and um <clears throat> excuse me <Woo> <clears throat> somebody in the chat room says they're on their way to ohio what for <laughs> why <laughs> what's in ohio i got relatives in ohio um the um the things that we have to pay attention to are really simple i mean seriously real simple I always use this as an analogy or, or as an illustration. I mean, if you and I are standing next to a red Volkswagen and you misinterpret or, or have a different interpretation of the vehicle, but it's a Volkswagen and it's red and we agree that it's a Volkswagen and red, then who's right and who's wrong? If you misinterpret it, if I'm, what, what? It's what it is. My point is, it is what it is, you know? And you can't misinterpret what's going on around us. We live in a dictatorship now. This has been planned out since the, uh, I believe, the second term of Ronald Reagan and also the two terms of Clinton. This has been in the works for a very, very long time. 2005, Baylor University in Texas. Then Prime Minister of Canada, was that uh, Paul Martin? And also then Mexican President uh, Vicente Fox got together and signed a little document creating the foundation for dun, 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 North American Union. Sound familiar? In 2009, President Obama and Stephen Harper, the Prime Minister of Canada, and uh, Felipe Calderon, Mexican President, signed another document dun, 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 to fill in the blanks of what the other document was. And created an infrastructure that allowed the borders to be open. Okay? All right? <clears throat> and now, I think in 2011, he signed another document. Basically putting the roof on the house. We are now a North American Union, folks. That's what it is. That's why Harry Reid doesn't want to fast track these deals that are going on right now that would put the Asian and European Union at peril, the deals that we have with them. He doesn't want that fast tracked. I can tell you why, because Harry Reid wants a piece of the action. 
That's why. Now, I know it's on your mind, so what do you think of the State of the Union address? From Mediaite.com, the five, Obama used, in quotes, wounded soldier as, quote, human shield against criticism. Fox News, the five, opened their post State of the Union show Wednesday with some unexpected praise for the speech, specifically President Obama, the Obama's decision to honor Corey Remsburg, an Army Ranger who was badly wounded while on his 10th deployment in Afghanistan. But it wasn't long before the tone shifted and the hosts, including Eric Bowling and Greg Gutfeld, began questioning the president's motives in ending his address the way he did. Bowling called the section of uh, section featuring Remsburg, quote, the moment of the whole speech, unquote, but lamented the fact that it came more than an hour into the speech, quote, for me, he could have gone to it earlier, unquote, Bowling said, adding that even if he wanted to come near the end of the speech, he should have given a real conclusion to the speech. Quote, he almost used that really heartfelt patriotic moment to say goodnight. Unquote. Gutfeld told, uh, took things much further, saying, quote, this heroic man was somewhat disconnected from the limp litany of grad school garbage that came before, and it felt like it was placed at the end of the speech to armor against scrutiny, unquote. He added, quote, Everyone walks away thinking about this amazing hero and not how lame the president's speech was, unquote. He also said, it was really moving at the end, but I felt like I was being used. That's what Greg uh, Gutfeld said. Summing up Gutfeld's point, Andrea Tenteros said, quote, sounds like you feel like Corey was being used as a human shield from criticism, unquote. There's a video for that. As soon as I can copy the site and put it on Free America Radio on Facebook, I will. The, folks, this president has totally and absolutely screwed this nation in every way possible. Okay? Every way possible. I'm going to go go to a little 18-second uh, break here, but right after that, I'm going to play a warning. You've probably heard this before. Please hear it again because it's very important. If you have anything that you want to send me, any clips, anything that you find important, send them to freeamericaradio at usa.com. freeamericaradio at usa.com. I shall return. Misfit, Samo misfit, misfit, is a misfit, Samo. ignorant of hygiene, destructive, disorderly, and totally disrespectful. It's the 515 with Samo on Samo Radio. AM 1700, Daytona Beach, Holly Hill. And Southnet 1. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations. A new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. Now. One side in this campaign has been telling us that the issues of this election are the maintenance of peace and prosperity. The line has been used, we've never had it so good. I won't have to worry about putting gas in my car. I won't have to worry about paying my mortgage. You know, if I, if I help him, he's going to help me. But I have an uncomfortable feeling that this prosperity isn't something on which we can base our hopes for the future. The, the key point I'm making right now is that uh, the economy is moving in a positive direction. And yet our government continues to spend $17 million a day more than the government takes in. You're telling me we got to go spend money to keep from going bankrupt? The answer, yeah, that's what I'm telling you. We've raised our debt limit three times in the last 12 months. 
And now our national debt is one and a half times bigger than all the combined debts of all the nations of the world. We're going to raise the debt limit. Uh, we always have. Uh, we will do it again. We have $15 billion in gold in our treasury. We don't own an ounce. I have been informed by the, that the majority plans to block consideration of uh, this amendment, which is number 1367, regarding the transparency at the Federal Reserve. Foreign dollar claims are $27.3 billion. It said that China has now surpassed Japan as the U.S. government's largest creditor, owning at least 10 percent of all U.S. debt, perhaps as much as $700 billion. And we've just had announced that the dollar of 1939 will now purchase 45 cents in its total value. President Obama is expected to face tough questions over the U.S. decision to pump 600 billion freshly printed dollars into its economy. Now, the move is an attempt to revive the country's finances, but will result in the devaluation of the dollar. We're at war with the most dangerous enemy that has ever faced mankind in his long climb from the swamp to the stars. We've got to give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, uh, world order that I think all of us would like to see. And it's been said if we lose that war and in so doing lose this way of freedom of ours. You'll construct a legal regime to make indefinite detention legal. History will record with the greatest astonishment that those who had the most to lose did the least to prevent its happening. Well, I think it's time we ask ourselves if we still know the freedoms that were intended for us by the founding fathers. For some trips, it'll be faster than flying without the pat down. Anna was, was picked to go through. Pretty much everybody except the baby was, was picked to go through uh, the, the scanner. If we lose freedom here, there's no place to escape to. This is the last stand on earth. Damn America, that's in the Bible. Whether we believe in our capacity for self-government or whether we abandon the American Revolution and confess that a little intellectual elite in a far distant capital can plan our lives for us better than we can plan them ourselves. I've got a core set of values that uh, I think have to be advanced um, and, and that I, my individual salvation depends on uh, our collective salvation. You and I are told increasingly we have to choose between a left or right. Well, I'd like to suggest there is no such thing as a left or right. There's only an up or down. We had an election and it was about a direction for our country. And regardless of their sincerity, their humanitarian motives, those who would trade our freedom for security have embarked on this downward course. In this vote harvesting time, they use terms like the great society, or as we were told a few days ago by the president, we must accept a greater government activity in the affairs of the people. E pluribus unum, out of many, one. In the end, in the end, that's what this election is about. Well, the trouble with our liberal friends is not that they're ignorant, it's just that they know so much that isn't so. It, over the course of 10 years, it would cost what it would cost us. It, it, <laughs> All right. Okay. We're going to. The, it would cost us about the same as it would cost. Did you know that the first matrix was designed to be a perfect human world where none suffered? where everyone would be happy. It was a disaster. No one would accept the program. Entire crops were lost. Some believed that we lacked the programming language to describe your perfect world, but I believe that as a species, human beings define their reality through misery and suffering. The perfect world was a dream that your primitive cerebrum kept trying to wake up from. Which is why the Matrix was redesigned to this, the peak of your civilization.
folks, welcome back, welcome back. This is the Views Expressed right here on the Free America Radio Network. We are free and we are Americans. And if we network together, we can take this country back. Yes, we can do that. The question is, do you want to? Because I don't know too many people right now that have the balls to stand up to their politicians. And I use that term loosely. Look up the word at dictionary.com or open a book called the dictionary and look up the word politician. You might be surprised. Hmm. <sighs> Welcome, one and all from all over the world, all over the country, and right here, specifically in the biggest little city in the world, Reno, Nevada, in the surrounding areas, including, including Las Vegas. Yes. Las Vegas, Nevada. Everybody thinks that uh, the capital of Nevada is Las Vegas. Nope. It's Carson City, which is like 30 miles south of where I'm at right now. So... <laughs> <clears throat> And, and you can walk through the Capitol building. I've got pictures, as a matter of fact. And uh, it's interesting. If, if we got together, if there was a whole bunch of people, whether coming from Las Vegas or surrounding areas from, you know, uh, Virginia City, who, wherever, you know, they can just come here. And we can all go down to Carson City and protest down there. I think they might get you know, a clue that we're unhappy. They're giving, uh, uh, I think Governor Brian Sandoval, uh, Nick Tucker from Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker on Facebook and distortedreality.podbean.com. Hopefully you're still in the chat room because I read this. I read the headline. I didn't read the article. Was the governor, Brian Sandoval, here in Nevada is thinking with the attorney general that they're within their rights and the law to ban same-sex marriage. Okay. My question is this, why is that the, the, the important issue of the day in the Capitol? Why? Why is that an important issue when we have other things going on? Such as 25% of the state of Nevada is, well, immigrants. And I use that term loosely. I think somewhere about half of those are illegal immigrants. Plus, here just last month, they gave illegal immigrants. I don't, no, I'm gonna, I don't want to call them any, uh, immigrants. They're illegal aliens. They're criminals. They're illegal aliens. They gave them driver's license or driver privilege cards. I think it was a stupid idea because now we got to deal with that crap. Okay. You've got minor stuff like same sex marriage, giving driver's license to illegal aliens, you know, yada, yada, yada. You got all that little stuff, right? I mean, it's important. It's, it's really affects the community, of course, but we got bigger issues like a dictator in Washington, DC, like, you know, a, a nuclear meltdown in Japan, like, uh, let's see, Russia is saying that they're going to come in and help with security at, at the Sochi Olympics or the Olympics in Sochi, uh, Sochi. And, um, you know, so, I mean, we have all of these things. Now, my question is, why aren't people paying attention? Why aren't people paying attention? Why are why are they looking at this at all, all these issues and going, ah, if it doesn't affect me, and they just go in their house, close their door, and forget about it? Or why are there people saying, what's in it for me? Huh. I know for a fact that there are people out there who feel that it doesn't matter. That if it doesn't affect them, then eh, 
you know, just go on with your life. Let's see, dumbass. Gas prices go up. Food prices go up. You're not working 40 hours. You're working 29 to 32 hours. You are, uh, your company has, or the insurance company has dropped your company from their uh, system. So you no longer have health coverage. So you got to get on Medicaid or get on the ACA, uh, the, you know, Affordable Care Act. Um, it's, it's, yeah. If it, if it doesn't affect me, I don't care. It is affecting you. And if you are going to continue to say, well, if it doesn't affect me or, or, you know, I don't want to talk politics or I don't want to do this or I don't want to do that. I, let me just, Hey, reality check number two here, folks. Cause I gave a reality check at the beginning of, of the hour, uh, the, the last hour, um, <clears throat> reality check. It's affecting you because you're doing nothing about it. It's affecting you because you're not getting up and going out and telling your politicians, you know, enough's enough. It's affecting you because you don't have the balls to stand up to the system. The story of David and Goliath. Remember that one? Who won in that little, that little engagement? I don't want to hear it anymore. People are going to tell me, oh, I don't like talking politics because people get too emotional and they think they're right. Uh, yeah, someone like me who researches and does all this and puts two and two together. Yeah, I would say I'm more right than you are. And then let's look at another aspect of all of this that does affect you. How about this? Churches. Yeah, your 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 church down the street, the one that signed signed the five hundred one c three tax exempt status form with the government. Once they did that, the government tells you that you cannot endorse a political candidate, that you cannot do this, you cannot do that, you cannot talk about this, you cannot talk about that. Excuse me, I got a constitution prior to eighteen seventy one that says I can say any damn thing I want to from the pulpit. You don't like it. Take it up with my attorney. I have heard of pastors and ministers getting so riled that they start talking like truckers. And you know what I'm talking about. I have more respect for people who are passionate who are honest and truthful with themselves and who uh, say it like it is. That's why I like Nick Tucker. And when you listen to his show, distortedreality.podbean.com, he doesn't, he, <laughs> he's told me privately, he sometimes gets so crazy, he gets so wild, gets so excited that, you know, <laughs> he starts talking like a trucker. He'll say words and, you know, stuff like that think we all do at times so i don't fault him for that because he's passionate about what he talks about and he understands what's going on oh but every so often hmm. when i listen to his show i can tell he's holding back because of the way that i was raised and by the way my father was a truck driver for 30 some odd years I hold back only because I know that it doesn't sound good to raise all kinds of hell and cuss like a trucker and do all that. I know that. I understand that. But I'm very passionate about what I do and about what I know. And I'm passionate about your freedoms. Hello, your freedoms. It's not just about me. It's you. And yes, everything going on around you will affect you at some point and has. Have you gone and filled up your car with gas? Have you gone to your nearest local store and to Walmart and all these other ones? Oh, yeah. It's affected you, hasn't it? Jen. The love muffin has left the building. <laughs> she laughs. She had to go somewhere. 
Nick Tucker said he's still here. Am I right in saying that we're passionate about what we do and passionate about getting the word out? Because I got to tell you, this venue, this platform that I have gives me an opportunity to show people exactly what's going on, ripping the veil away, showing who's pulling the handles and pushing the buttons, and telling you what I know to be true, not to me, but to everyone. Remember the analogy of the red Volkswagen? Think about that one. I do believe that you and I, we the people, can come together and make the changes necessary. And if we have to give the New World Order a black eye, a busted lip, a cracked ribs, a couple of injuries that are life-threatening, then we will do that. And if the NSA is listening, you heard what I said. And if Google is listening, by the way, did you know that it's now known that when you use Google Chrome, yeah, they can listen to everything. So if they're listening, I'm going to kick your ass. You don't like it? Bring it on. We can stand up for what is right, for what is true, for what is patriotic. Why? Because we have it in our spirit to know... What is right and what is wrong? I've had people tell me, well, it's all made up. Man has made up the rules. Man has created the rules that other men will have to follow. Laws were created by man. The Bible was written by man. All of it is made up. Well, yeah. It how do you find justice? How, how did the people from many, many years ago find justice? How did they know what was right or wrong? How did they hold others responsible? How did they hold others accountable? They went deep inside and said, you know, what that person did was not right. Well, how do we... Hold that person accountable. Well, we need to make up some rules. And these rules will get a couple of other people together and make them laws. How do you think a bill gets through Congress? You know, it's a bunch of little ideas and rules that people like, and this is what we should have, and this is what we can have, and we'll debate this in this committee, and we'll debate that in that committee, and then we'll bring it to Congress, and if they shoot it down, they shoot it down, we'll go back, work on it again, and we'll do it again all over, and then we'll send it to the president's desk. Pay attention, folks. Because everything that's happening around you affects you in the smallest way to the grandest way. How many trips in the last five years? Let me ask you a question. If you're in the speaker chat, answer this for me if you can. In the last five years, how many summer vacations have you had to put off because you didn't have the money to do it because all the prices went up around you? I'm fortunate enough to be able to see this stuff from not only, you know, a very personal, personal uh, perspective, but also I can read the articles, I can look at them, I can put two and two together and go, wow, this is affecting everyone, not just me. So it's not just me. I'm not crazy. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. If anything, I'm a realist because I see it for what it is and it's real. You should see it for what it is because it's real. And it does affect you. It has an effect on you in every aspect. And the hard thing to understand is this. Now is the time 
for all good men to come to the aid of their country. If anybody is taking a, taking a typing class, you know where that came from. Now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of their country. Some say it's party, but hey, the country needs we the people right now. Now, <clears throat> have you suffered enough? Have you suffered enough? Have you looked out at what's out there in the grand scheme of things and said, I'm done? And if anybody is listening, such as the CIA or the NSA or anybody of that nature, let me tell you this. We the people have a mantra or should have a mantra. And it should be this. Four words. I will not comply. I will not comply. We have a dictator in the White House who's ruling by edict, who is making up laws as he goes along, and totally, totally outside of the rule of law of the Constitution of the United States of America prior to 1871. That's what I stand on. But he's following the rule of law of the Corporation of the United States. 1871 and up to today, 29th of January, 2014. Let me say that again, four words that all of you should say to your politicians. I will not comply. I will not comply. Some would say, I'll be the first to be on the trucks to the FEMA camps. Don't bet on it, jackass. Mama didn't raise no fool. Daddy taught me how to take care of myself. And I can tell you right now, there are over 200 million Americans that are pissed off with this dictator in chief and it's i'll tell you right now the un that has foreign military on american soil from mexico to canada to, to europe to to russian to pakistan to whatever to chinese military here yeah yeah 200 million people with all that firepower there ain't a damn thing you can do about it think but let me remind everybody that the system this corrupt system out of washington dc with the dictator at the top is waiting for one of us to pull the trigger so they can suspend the constitution and implement martial law to take us to the fema camps i recommend do not do that that is exactly what they want. They want you to play into their hand. And once you do, then it's snap the trap and you're on your way to the FEMA camp. Civil disobedience. Civil disobedience is the way to go. Talk to people in New Hampshire. Talk to people in Keene, New Hampshire. Look at what they're doing. Other places as well have civil disobedience. But let me tell you something. I don't condone violence in any way, shape, or form. But I do support defense. And if 200 million people with over 300 million firearms is ever confronted by people that want to take us out, I guarantee you it's going to make the revolutionary war in the civil war looked like a freaking birthday party in a park 
it's not going to be good, folks. And I hope you're up for it. I hope you're up for it. Don't give them that opportunity to suspend the Constitution. Do what you have to do, but do it peacefully. But if they make the move, you are obligated and it is your duty to protect yourself and your family and everybody around you. I don't want to see a civil war, to be honest with you. It won't serve a purpose. It will just be bloody. And it will hurt and it will be painful. But if we can force the politicians to impeach this butthead in Washington, D.C. and to jail the vice president and the speaker of the house and all these other people below him. As a matter of fact, if we can push them all to fire all 535 congressmen and women, then let's do it under what is that? A constitutional convention? That is the intellectual civil war. Let's do it that way. But if it comes to it, the option to do it the other way is very much available. Go to freeamericaradio.us for more information. Come check me out tomorrow, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, right here on Free America Radio Network. Free America Radio at USA.com. We the people have the power, for we are America! America!